Earlier this month, on July 4th, during Anime Expo, the Chainsaw Man production team announced one thing, and one thing only. And that was that the anime was going to be made without any censorship whatsoever. Fans were delighted, and they all collectively signed a breath of relief. I mean, the only thing that could make the situation better would be if they announced a release date, but... Beggars can't be choosers. Uh, I mean, I'll just wait when it comes out, potentially, who knows, in the next few seasons or so. But regardless, even though Chainsaw Man is safe from this fate of censorship, there are tons of anime that weren't. Hi, I'm Bayfund, and I'm here to pick out some scenes in animes that have been completely butchered by censorship. The reasons why and where they're doing this, and why I think Chainsaw Man, even though it's made without censorship, might still get the same treatment. So let's begin. And what am I going to talk about first? Well, that should be what hits the hardest. Here in the West, we've had a complicated relationship with anime since it first trickled down into our culture. You know, lots of adults, even today, still assume that anime, because it's animation, is still just for kids. So they don't expect anime to be, like, you know, raunchy or violent in any way. So here's example A. Dragon Ball. There are tons of different cuts of Dragon Ball that have aired throughout the years. Specifically Dragon Ball Z, because that's the one that's more popular out here in the States. And what do you notice about a lot of these versions? Well, I would say number one, a lot of them don't have blood. A lot of times, especially in older anime, blood was edited out to be kind of like a either a black or a dark brown kind of color to try and minimize the impact of what the hits and the lasers and, you know, the general damage was doing. I would say this is the most common form of censorship that's been seen. Hell, to be completely honest, they kind of do a very similar thing over in Japan too. We'll get into that later though. Another thing here in the West is if you've ever heard of this little, you know, corporation, it's called Four Kids. That name probably rings a few bells in, you know, people in my generation. Most anime that were shown on TV were dubbed by them. And to cut the story a little short, they took more than a few artistic liberties when bringing over anime here. Uh, and what's one of the anime that they dubbed over? Um, oh, you know. Maybe just like the most popular anime to have ever shown up over in the West or probably in any part of the world, you know, just Pokemon. And I get it, I get where they would take artistic liberties from Pokemon. I mean, from first inspection, this is just a trio of kids out in the world, uh, catching animals and then having them fight each other in the brutal arena to the death, you know? Of course four kids doesn't want that shown to their kids. It's too fucking violent for them. So what do they do? Easy. To minimize the effect that anime could have on these kids, they turned an onigiri into a jelly-filled donut. My favorite! Nothing beats a jelly-filled donut! Uh, uh, why? Easy. They have to take away all traces of culture, uh, in any anime, you know? A kid's not gonna understand what an onigiri rice ball is, but they do damn well know what a jelly-filled donut is. The kid would be shocked otherwise, or have the controversial ideas of asking for one in the future. <laughs> the horror. Yeah, Four Kids does a lot of dumb shit with their shows. There's a bunch of other stuff that was taken out, but it's a lot more reasonable in that aspect because there are full-on episodes in Pokemons that have guns in them, so yeah, you can tell that that's gonna be cut. Even American shows don't have them. And then there's that extremely notorious episode with Porygon that made a lot of kids have epileptic seizures. But to be frank, Japan got to them first, so I'm not gonna give credit to Four Kids. And what other anime did they get their grubby nits on? Well, another one, heavily beloved show by people slightly older than me. And that one's Sailor Moon. Not just would four kids change the graphics in a show, they would also change the dialogue with the dubbing. So when there was a homosexual relationship in the show, what would they do? They would cut it out completely, leave no trace of it in, and just make the two characters friends. I've heard people say in arguments, oh, this is the 90s, of course they're gonna do that. But Japan made it that way. That's the way that it was originally intended to be viewed, read, in any case. They just make it to fit their standards and, to be honest, the Western conventions of that time. Now, let's take a step back from the United States and into the rest of the world. Much more prominent moments of censorship in anime come in when you're looking at places like China. You guys remember Demon Slayer, right? Yeah, season two specifically comes into mind from there. Why? Well, because, look, let's see how these women are drawn. That looks just fine, right? No. China doesn't think so. China wants them to be covered head to toe. They just want modesty, you know? Yeah, it's definitely not an impressive move to say that women can't dress the way that they want. And also when it comes to like things like blood, lots of times they just completely edit out the red blood and in favor just 
color swap it to white. So it looks like the character is just being completely caked in shit. Well, I mean, that's only in worst case situations. To be completely frank, there are some anime that I am in support of seeing censorship for. Why? Well, because they're garbage animes. Mostly, like Redo of the Healer. I struggled watching four episodes of this show. I just sat through them because I wanted to know what all the talk was about and the fuss. But it was just your regular old, completely disgusting, uh, fully censored hentai with a revenge fantasy mixed in. Yeah, that one everywhere it was released got censored because the violence that occurs in that show is a little off-putting to be honest and if you aired that on tv ah uh, that's that's not the best thing to see but i am fully for anyone that wants to see it uncensored just get the blu-ray for it which is always a nice solution but to give it if i am to say the benefit of the doubt china censors everything it wants everything to be controlled inside of its media i mean even the top gun movie tom cruise had to abide and change his jacket so it doesn't even acknowledge taiwan yeah it's a fucked up set of rules um but that's how it's always been over there i guess uh, i don't know how that would change and next we're talking about the homeland of anime itself japan where the rule is if it's airing on tv most likely it will be censored in one way or another this is why I say Chainsaw Man, even though it's made to be uncensored, is still going to be censored upon first viewing. Or, well, when it's first airing on television. As you've seen before, when we're talking about the United States, it's a company that does the censoring after the fact when the anime gets released. It's pretty much the same thing when it's over in Japan. The channel itself wants it to be censored so that more people can see it. I've got some dumb examples as well of why censorship doesn't really work in this case, but then there are like... Some good ones, to be honest. Dumb ones first. JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, Stardust Crusaders. Here we've got 17-year-old Jotaro Kujo. I know, I'm talking about JoJo again. I'm going back to my roots. What's he doing in this match against Darby? Oh, oh, I, I can't really see what he's doing. I, To be frank, it just looks like there's a black shadow all over his face. I mean, like, what's he doing in the manga? Oh, he's smoking. Oh, of, oh, I, I could have inferred that because of the smoke, right? Oh, yeah, but why the fuck do they censor his entire mouth? They could have done the four kids version and changed it out for like a lollipop or something. But they have to censor out his entire face because smoking is something a kid should never see. I mean, I understand guy 17, but he's built like he's fucking 35. It just kind of fits his aesthetic. And that black bar appears pretty often depending on what you're watching. Usually, it's there because it's trying to hide violence. So like, any gore or gratuitous blood that's shown, uh, that shadow just gets cast upon it, so, oh no, a kid can't tell that someone's dying or bleeding over there in that corner. No, it's just really dark and it's hard to see, so they can't infer anything. But funnily enough, I also kind of considered a good form of censorship when it comes to other types of animes. Kind of like we're in the rom-com genre where the, let's just say the MC walks into a situation and oh my god, they find out one of the heroines is completely nude, oh my god, ah! Classic harem moment. Oh, so you know what happens? Steam rises from the water that's on the floor and then covers everything. Or the miraculous light that goes through the window, completely blocking the view of anything. <laughs> This is just as common in manga as well. But why do I say that it's good in this kind of case? It's good in terms that it sells Blu-rays because Blu-rays usually have the uncensored version and it's marketed towards having it uncensored. That's how they manage to get money to the creators. Buy the volume or buy the Blu-ray. That's how you're gonna see it. Usually in those cases of like an intimate scene happening, the censorship doesn't affect the story or anything in any way. I mean, what comes to mind to me, Mushoku Tensei, when that first aired, there were some scenes that were happening with some characters. Um, you just kind of heard the noise in the background, and then you just see it from our main character's point of view. And then later on, they said, hey, if you're a bit of a degenerate, by the Blu-ray, you'll see a lot more of this scene. And while Japan, on the surface at least, seems like a very conservative country, I would say that they're probably the most lenient when it comes to censorship. I mean... If you look up anything that was produced in like the 90s or the 80s in anime, that shit was dark as fuck. There was probably like no limits. If you know what the Comics Code Authority was here in the United States, uh, I would say like probably 50 years ago or something, Japan's never had something like that. Everything that's been released has been just like, hey, do whatever the fuck you want as long as whatever publisher is letting you do it. Like most shit don't got nothing on Violence Jack. And in the case of Chainsaw Man, 
I think we're gonna get a very solid adaptation with very little changes, if any whatsoever. I think we're gonna see the vomit kiss in full glory, and that's gonna be disgusting. And then we're probably gonna see Denji's thoughts of, you know, that double page spread on that beginning of that volume. That, that would be nice to see too, I guess. But depending on where you live and who's the distributor where you live, the show might look a little different than what it does in Japan or than what it will in the United States. A studio might intend for a show to be viewed one way, but it's not up to them when it's distributed outside of the country. That is in the realm of everyone else that controls that side of the money. So censorship in anime is something that has been with it for a very long time, but I can't really see it going away anytime soon. So. This is Bayfond with a final message. Hey, if you really want to look up like a really fucked up scene or like want to see something uncensored, just look it up online. You'll probably find it that way because everything gets posted on the internet. See you guys next time when I also talk about something most likely pertaining to anime. Peace.